Well, good morning, good afternoon, good night, good morrow, whatever time this message reaches you, I pray the grace of God favor you. Okay, you'll be showered with the grace of God. May your day be showered with the grace of God. In Jesus' name, amen. So this morning's message is entitled, uh, Focus. So, so, LOR Radio fam, YouTube fam, Facebook fam, where is your focus? What consumes your thinking? What has the volume of your attention? Come on, brothers and sisters. Sometimes we have to do a little bit of introspection, right? Have you ever been in a class? in church or in a lecture or just someone speaking to you your spouse your children your friends or just people speaking to you and you haven't heard a word they said oh you heard when they started the rest you don't know what they said simply because your mind wasn't there, right? Your focus was someplace else. When our focus is in a place, wherever, hmm, listen. You know, Sandra from uh, Paul Blake's ministry said, uh, she suggested this, tape yourself praying. And listen to it that is one way of showing where your focus is when you tape yourself praying to God and you listen don't do it one time just 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 tape yourself and listen it will tell you where your focus is why because our speech reveal what's in our hearts what does the Bible tell us out of the abundance of our hearts our mouth speaks right now i've heard politicians give politically correct speeches preachers give holy and acceptable speeches guest lighters and abusers give speeches that make themselves seem helpful even make themselves seem like they are the victims but when they are caught on hot mic sons and daughters of god listen when they weren't aware that they were being overheard or they were being taped. Yeah, you've seen it. You've seen it in the news. You've seen some in the news. Some you haven't seen, but if you've been to enough functions, if you've been around a lot of people in a crowded room, you have heard the heart of people being exposed. Because I tell you what, we tend to speak our hearts when we're overly excited, when we're depressed, or when we're surprised. Uh, isn't that when the truth comes out? Listen, when things get hot, when things aren't going well, as Bishop was saying just now, going through the valley, it tells you, it tells us where our focus is at, what, by what comes out of our mouth, because that's what is in our hearts. Listen, Jesus blessed the reader. He blesses us, the readers. He blesses us, the listeners, with the following. Matthew twelve thirty-three through 37. It says, a tree is identified by its roots. It's fruit, sorry. It's fruit, it's fruit, it's fruit. Not the root, because you don't see the root. The root is buried in the ground, so you won't know. But the fruit that it produces... Aha, you will know. Yes. If a tree is good, its fruit will be good, won't it? Yes, it will. Word of God says so, and I believe the word of God. I've proven it. Hallelujah, glory to God. If a tree is bad, however, its fruit will be bad. You brood of snakes, Jesus was speaking. How could evil men like you Speak what is good and right. For whatever is in your heart, 
determines what you say. A good person produces good things from the treasury of a good heart, and an evil person produces evil things from the treasury of an evil heart. And I tell you this, you must give an account on Judgment Day for every idle word you speak. The words you say will either acquit you or condemn you. You know, I could just now hear my grandmother's voice when I was a little girl saying, let your words be few. <laughs> let your words be few. Uh, yeah, sometimes we really seriously need to just let our words be few. You see, when we read this scripture, this passage, we learn a couple of things. Whatever... The truth will come to light, no matter how long it takes. Isn't that so? There is a saying, you can fool some of the people some of the time, but you can't fool all the people all the time. The thing is, we could speak beautiful speeches, but the truth will come forth. And as I like to say, we tell on ourselves every day, all day. Yes, we do. Whatever we believe, we speak in honest moments. Whatever we believe, it doesn't matter. Listen, we could, our speech could be eloquent or vile and vulgar, but I tell you what, whatever we believe in honest moments, we speak it. When things are not going right, when we're overly excited, do you know that, or oh, we're surprised. Wherever our focus is, it will be revealed. A spouse whose focus is on him or herself will have affairs and not even feel guilty about it. Why is that? You know why? Their focus is simply not on their spouse. It's only on self. Yes. It's on self-gratification. You see, a person who's motivated by money will make unsavory attempts to get cash. Wherever our focus is, what happens? That's where our heart is. Jesus said it. He said it in Matthew 6 and 21. Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart also will also be. Listen. Let me tell you something. You can't pull one over on God. Whatever he says is so. Let's, there is everything in the Bible. It doesn't matter what it is you're going through. There is a word there that applies. God knew before you were even born. I mean, it's so amazing. So anyway, as I said before, this morning's message is entitled Focus. So, wherever our focus is, wherever our heart is, there goes the focus and vice versa. Let me show you a picture. I hope you can see it. Right? What is the focus in this picture? What's the focus in this picture, Bishop? The beautiful flowers. You, there is a person in the background. You can't tell if there is a house. You can tell, you can see vaguely that there is a person in the background. But the focus, the camera was focusing on this beautiful red flower. With this picture, what the, folk, what the, what the uh, camera did, this is called depth of field. So how is your depth of field today? How is your depth of field today, son or daughter of God? What is in the forefront of your focus? You see, the photographer purposefully wanted us to see this flower, wanted us to examine the beauty of the flower and not to overlook the flower. See, the recipient of the flower is in the background, is blurred. 
you can't even tell. We see the outline, but we cannot definitively see the person. The person is not in focus because the camera, the person who was taking the, cam the picture wanted us to focus on the flower. So we have a clear picture of the flower. We could see its petals. We could, it's all, we can almost touch it. We know it's soft. We can see the softness. This is an in-depth picture of the flower. So let me ask you something. What is standing out in the forefront of your life? And what's blurred into the background? How is the depth of field of your life? Whatever we focus on, we amplify, we make it larger. Where our focus lie, our speech follows, and what follows our speech? Our actions. If you're farsighted when it comes to Jesus, see with your depth of field, if, if you're farsighted, he who is near to you, right there with you, you cannot see him because you've blurred him out. And so, when you start saying, where are you, Jesus? Your depths of field. Jesus is not the focus. He's in the background. Guess what's in the focus? The problems, the trials, the sickness, the lack of funds. When everything else is in focus, then you've just put Jesus, you've just become farsighted. Because Jesus is now blurred to you. When we talk about Jesus, you see, when we're with certain persons, or because of our profession, or, you know, others are talking about him. And when we get behind closed doors, if our minds aren't on him, if we're not spending and enjoying personal time with him. And because it's one thing to, to pick up your Bible and read it. It's another to meditate and enjoy what you're doing with the Lord. If that's not happening, it doesn't matter how vehemently, how forcefully or passionately we profess Jesus. We will truly tell who he is to us. If Jesus is not our focus, it means we have put everything else and anyone else above him. That's the reality of our lives. That's the picture. That's the clear picture. That is the snapshot that Jesus sees. You see how we could see that rose? We could tell its petals soft. It's, it, we could almost touch and feel and smell the rose. Well, what do you think Jesus is seeing when we've emulated every, everything else and anyone else above him? Look at the picture he sees. He's blurred in the background. Suddenly, he sees the lack that we're looking at, the sickness, the, the, the strife, the, the whatever it is, the problems of the world. Uh, the concerns, the fear. He wants us refocus the lens, the camera lens today. Because when we focus on Jesus, hallelujah, come on, we've got to put Jesus back in focus. Adjust those camera lens this morning and put Christ Jesus back in focus. Because when we put him in focus, we have a crisp clear picture of who he is just the way i showed you the picture of that rose just the way we could see the rose when we have that clear crisp picture of christ jesus hallelujah glory to god we see him as the one who loves us immensely loves us deeply loves us greatly loves us to the heights and depths of this universe. Huh? We see the one who gave his valuable life 
because of his great love for us, to reconcile us back to our heavenly Abba, our God and creator. Hallelujah. We see Jesus when we, when, we, when we have him in focus. We see him as our redeemer who paid the costly price to redeem our sinful souls. See, when we adjust and put Jesus in focus, we see him as provider who supplies for all our needs. You see, we no longer focus on the debts, the bills that are high, the mortgage, the rent, the tuition, right? Of whatever it is that needs to be paid, the medicine to be bought, the food to be bought, the children to be cared for, the spouses to be cared for, the car notes to be paid. No, we don't, we don't see those above him, but, but... We see him. He's in focus. And he is the supplier. Our provider. Uh, Yahweh Yahweh. When we have Jesus in focus. We see him as protector. The one who shields us. He becomes our shield. And protects us from all harm. He is the one who quiets our storms. When we put Jesus in focus, we'll no longer fear the hours that fly by day. You see, because there will be no stray bullets. There will be no attacks on the trains. There will be no attacks on the streets. He protects us from accidents and, and our shield. When we put Jesus in focus, when we put him in focus, like that flower, we see him as who? Healer, Yahweh will see. The one who improves our health and generates new blessings in our lives and rejuvenates our flesh. We see him as the one who mends our broken hearts and resuscitates our wounded emotions. We see him reviving and restoring our souls. We see him when we put him in focus as king of all kings, creator of the universe. We see him in his rightful place as lord of all lords. We'll have no other gods before him. When we put him in focus, we see him as Shar Shalom, who brings peace, which is necessary for our healing, by the way. We see him as the one who keeps our minds in perfect peace. And the one who rebukes stress and strife, panic attacks and depression. When we put him in focus, we see him as Yeshua, the everything for every solution ever needed. When we put him in focus, I'm going to show you a picture. Get the picture again. Do you see? You know what the picture is about. It's about the rose in this picture. So in the picture of your life and mine, we ought to make Jesus the focus. That when God, our heavenly Abba, looks at us, he says, ooh, my daughter has my son in focus. Ooh, my son has my son in focus. Come on, in the name of Jesus. We've got to start putting Christ Jesus in focus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm going to show you two other pictures. Here's a picture. That's a plane in the sky. Doesn't that look like a toy plane to you? Doesn't it look like a toy plane, Bishop? 
To me, it looks like a toy plane. It's more like a toy plane. When you look up in the sky and you see the plane out very high, it looks small just like the little toy plane you see in the store. Or your kid might have a toy plane. My kids have some planes. I've had, they've had planes that look bigger than this when it's away from us. I'm going to show you another picture. I just made my picture out of focus, but it's fine because it's not about me. Praise God, it's about now. Look at the the similar plane, huh? Do you see the difference? Now look at the people compared to the plane. <laughs> my God, my Lord, hold on. Yeah, just refocus. Just had to refocus. Amen. Now. A plane, as I said, when it's high in the sky, almost looks like a toy. It looks so small. You would never believe that plane could have 150 people or 300 people, depending on the size of the plane. But from our vantage point, from a distance, it seems like a toy plane. Up close, however, it reveals its massiveness compared to us. Now, how distant we feel from Jesus <laughs> will be the results we get. Because if he seems like he's way, 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 way far away from us, then we make him small and we make our problems loom large. But when we see Jesus as being big, it means that we are close to him. When we have him in focus, we're close to him. When you, when the thing you have in focus always is in the forefront of the picture. And so when Jesus looms large in our lives, it means we're aware of his closeness to us. It's the close proximity he is to us. You see. Then our problems become small. And they become unproblematic for us. If we view Jesus as being small. We, we won't receive the blessing or help quickly. But when we see him. As being large. When we, because think about it. Do you ever notice children? Like I've dealt with children. I've taught children of different ages. Something I notice though. And you'll see this. Doesn't matter how artistic the child is. Or the age of the child. One thing I've noticed with drawings. Ask a child to draw their parent in their life. And it will tell you who the parent is. I say we tell on ourselves. We really expose ourselves a lot. We expose ourselves in our drawings also. You can tell who matters to a child when you look at their drawing. The younger ones especially. Because the larger that person is to them, that's how they draw them. Now, if they deem you as smaller than them, they will be large in the picture and you will be like this size. They'll be like this and you'll be like this in the picture. For the more, the older the child, there are, there are different distinctions that differentiate and that, that reveals who, how important you are in their lives. Well, we do the same with God. We do the same with Christ Jesus. We do the same with the Holy Spirit of God. You see? We tell by our speech. The way we react. Oh, we all go through things at times, different things. Listen, the enemy of our souls hates us. 
and he throws all manner of things at us. There are times the Lord allows certain things because if we have pride or envy or jealousy or things in our lives to be worked out, the Lord might just allow it so that that can be worked out. But that's not God's best for our lives. If that was God's best for our lives, he wouldn't have said, hold your peace, I'll fight your battle, meaning he'll fight the things the enemy throws at us. Jesus wouldn't say, I myself am protecting you from the evil one harming you. Are we taking God at his word? Are we taking Jesus at his word? Are we not? Let me read this scripture. I'm reading Mark 11 and 23. says, Amen, O men. I say to you, whoever say to this mountain, be lifted up and be thrown into the sea and does not waver in his heart, but has faith that what he says happens, so it will be for him. Children, you ever notice? <laughs> Listen, I used to notice this when I went to elementary school. The children who had younger children who had older siblings in the same school, oh, they didn't care if you picked on them, they weren't afraid. They're like, I'm gonna tell my big brother, I'm gonna tell my big sister. You you wanted to tangle with them? Oh, go ahead. They weren't telling you don't do it, you know. They were just telling you, guess what? My big brother or big sister is going to handle you. They had a focus that if anything goes wrong, big brother, big sister, or sometimes it was siblings, Big brothers and big sisters are there. Jesus is also, besides being our savior, he is our heavenly big brother. So where is the focus on our big brother? Or are we focusing, now nah, I got to fight this battle. Mm. Uh, the, the word of God says, put on your armor and stand. Stand. Stand against the wiles of the enemy. Stand against the... Listen, he says, put on my shield that extinguishes the fiery darts of the enemy. I mean, come on. Who is fighting the battle for us? If not God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Yet we put them, we blur them. We change the depth of field. We've blurred them and we've now put the focus on everything else that is happening in our lives. And how do we expect to gain victory, sons and daughters of God? Because when we read the word, that's not how we gain victory. It's not. We've got to make the focus our Lord and Savior. I'm going to show you one more picture. I hope you can see. Okay. All right. You see Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune. And you see the sun. Now, if you look earth is sorry right there and that's the sun now who could really see the sun you might have needed some glasses to see the sun i mean sorry you can see the sun clearly but you, need, you might have needed glasses to see earth. 
earth looked like a pinhead, literally. In, 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 the, in the grand design of the galaxies, earth is the size of a pinhead. It's, it's smaller than my fingertip. It's, 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 it's smaller than the point of my pen. Oh, it's about the point of the pen. Yeah, there it is. It's about the point of the pen. In the grand design of the galaxies that God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit created. Are we recalibrating our camera lenses and getting the focus of who we really need to focus on? You can barely see her earth in this picture. Yet God placed us here. Then you see the proximity of the sun to the earth in the picture. Yet we're not burnt to a crisp. Come on, sons. Are, are you getting it? <laughs> oh. It takes the power of our omnipotent Daddy God to cover us, to protect us, to cause the order of the world to exist and to coexist and to not collide into each other and to work in perfect order. Yet, to us, earth looms large. The earth is large. I mean, you think about it. Even within our community. I say this all the time. I live in a very large community. My community board is a very large one, seriously. Some are smaller, but some are larger. But I'm just saying, even within our community, our communities, there are some communities in Queens, you know, and even within our borough, even within our state, even within, you know, I remember I, I, I went to Virginia and I drove uh, the, the direction I drove back to Brooklyn from. I drove through the entire Maryland. <laughs> and I, I was like, wait. I'm not out of Maryland yet. When do I get out of Maryland? <laughs> Instead of the kids saying, are we out yet? I was the one thinking, wait, we're still in Maryland? I was passing signs. I was like, we're still in Maryland. <laughs> just saying. Yet, I just showed you on the in the picture, in the grand design how totally tiny like the tip of this pen even smaller than the tip of my finger in the grand scheme so may I ask you a question our God who is bigger than the galaxies that he created our Jesus who is bigger than the galaxies that he co-created uh, how can we then create the depth of field where the problems are the ones that are in focus and God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit is in the background? There's something wrong with that, sons and daughters of God. That's the enemy of our souls trying to trick you. We have to put things back in perspective. We have to put things back in its proper order. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit must take focus in the picture of our lives. Do we think that God's arms are so short? He cannot help us. 
Is he that far away that he can't hear you? Or is he this close? That even your sigh he hears. Because I'm telling you this morning, he is this close. He is closer than your skin. He knows your breathing rhythm better than you do. He knows your thoughts before you think them. He knows the words that are forming on your lips, on your tongue, before it even reaches your lips. He knows what's in your heart and in your mind. That's how close he is to you. To be that aware of everything about you, he cannot be far from you. Because the further away you are from a person, the less focused they are, the less you can see them. You cannot, let me, let me, let, I said that was the last picture, but no, no, no. I, I, I must show you, oh, I, I, this just, uh, I have to show you this. Can you see the people in this, in this picture? If you had a family member in that picture, you could not pick them out from the distance. You could not. You definitely could not. Mm -mm. But from this, from this close, could you pick out someone that you knew? If someone you knew was in this picture, Bishop, would you be able to pick them out? Yes, you would. You, you, would, you, you would recognize your son, your daughter from behind. Trust me, this close. This close. Not, not the first picture. The first picture, no. I wouldn't be able to tell if my children, my spouse, my loved ones, anybody was, were there. But in, in this picture, I could pick out if someone I knew was in this picture. The closer, think about it, the closer, hmm, my God, the closer, the things, whatever is in focus is where our heart is, sons and daughters of God. Jesus told us in his own words, wherever our focus is, there our heart is. Whatever our focus is, that's what we're amplifying. So if we're not if we're not focused on God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, if we're not focused on Jesus, clearly they're blurred into the background. Jesus has proven, sons and daughters of God, that He is Lord of time and matter. When He compressed time and turned water into wine, in an instant he bypassed a process that takes years you ask the winemakers no wine is made overnight no wine is made overnight okay it takes years to make good wine and then not only did he he didn't use grapes which is what you know the fruits that are used to make wine uh, no, no, no. Water. Water. When was the last time? I've had bottles of water. I remember I went someplace and I got, uh, it was a designer. Um, I went to a function and I, I you, know, you know, in a swag, they gave out this bottle of water. So I love the bottle and I never opened it. What is in it for years? It has not turned into wine. I should say, you know, I, I was just thinking, it just came to my mind. I mean, if I thought about it before, I'd have brought it to show you guys. But it has not turned into wine, son and, sons and daughters of God. That tells us that our Lord and my Lord and Savior, my Jesus, your Jesus, well, you got to claim him for yourself. Jesus, he is Lord 
of time and matter because he can manipulate and turn water into wine the process that takes years he just compressed it into a matter of seconds ah hallelujah i don't know about you oh i'm so excited Woo! hallelujah what are you expecting from jesus Put him in focus. If you're going through difficulties, do not focus on the difficulties, but let Jesus be the focus in your picture. If you have chronic pain, if you have an autoimmune disease, if you listen, if your doctor's telling you, nay, turn from the doctor and look to Jesus. <laughs> Come on. Say, Jesus, what say ye? Okay, so that's old English doesn't matter what language you speak say Jesus hey what are you saying right you may understand that better okay all right praise God listen if you have squandered your years the Lord of time he can heal you and restore your years he can give you the extended time and he can give you quality years as well because he's the lord of time he exists outside of time he created time come on now joel 2 25 and 26 says and i that's i god not me so read it for yourself you hear the lord saying it to you and i will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm my great army which I sent among you you know and now think about it back then he did send some plagues but he has punished sickness and disease in the body of his son so God's not sending it and you know when you think of how cancer is so rampant I, every time I don't know years now this is the first time I'm saying it publicly but I've said it to some folks but every time I would read this scripture when it says canker worm I always thought that that was cancer because cancer eats away at the flesh at the bone at the blood it, it it's a disease that eats away and and and, and, and yeah anyway but the thing is listen do not let that be your focus if that's trying to battle you do not let kidney disease do not let heart disease do not let skin disease do not let diabetes by the way let me tell you did you know and let me tell you something sons and daughters of god we have to pray the Bronx is labeled the sickest borough within the state. It's not just the borough because it's number 62. Brooklyn is second. Come on, sons and daughters. The borough of churches. <laughs> when I think about the irony of this, it's not really funny okay we need to really pray put Jesus back in focus we have to let the Holy Spirit start taking care of our health situation Brooklyn is the second sick, sickest borough sons and daughters of God for those who live in Brooklyn well the report is out there so whatever bar you live in you can go look at it or whatever part of the state or the nation you live in you can look at it as well there are reports out there but I tell you what as children of God what is our focus because I have found something the Word of God cannot lie it does not lie it is truth so when we put things back in order and we recalibrate the, the camera lens 
and we have things in proper focus, then things has to go right. The Lord said, he will restore the Lord of time, says he will restore the years, that the locusts, that the sickness is heaten. Uh, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army, you know, when the locusts come and they eat, you know, sometimes you go years, you, you may not have had a job for years, but that depletes the funds, very whatever you saved up. And God says, Jesus is saying, he's going to restore and ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that I've dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be ashamed. Come on, focus. Did you just focus? I don't know about you, but I saw it clearly there. Did you see, did you see that picture? What about King Hezekiah? Huh? God added years to his life, the Lord of time. Let me read verse 5, and it says, Go back to Ezekiah and tell him, This is what the Lord, the God of your ancestor David says, I have heard your prayer and seen your tears. I will add 15 years to your life. Isaiah 38 and 5. God will do for you and more what he did for Ezekiah. Jesus will do that and more for you. No matter what it is you're going through. He sees your tears. He knows your fears. He knows what concerns you. But do not be consumed by your fears or your concern. Put him, calibrate, recalibrate the camera lens and put him in focus. See, no matter what has eaten away your years, the divorce, the brokenness, the abuse, the illness, the lack of funds, the homelessness, he says, I will restore. What? You'll have plenty to eat. That's more than enough. You'll be satisfied more than enough. And praise the name of the Lord your God. Come on. The Lord of time and oh, hallelujah. Praise be to you, Jesus. Uh -uh. You're in focus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes. Praise the Lord. Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. Hey, Jesus. We praise you. I praise you. I glorify you. I magnify you. Come on. Magnify the Lord with me. Oh, magnify the Lord of time and space. Magnify Jesus, our Savior, the lover of our souls, our bridegroom, our big brother, our Savior and Redeemer. Come on. The Son of Righteousness. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory this morning. Thank you, Lord, for rising with healing in your wings. Hallelujah. Thank you, Protector Jesus. Thank you. Provider Jesus. Thank you. Deliverer Jesus. Hallelujah. You're back in focus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. For some. Some people had him in focus. For others. You know. But whether or not. We go through things and times and days. When we just kind of. Uh, and we realize. Wait. 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 Where is he? Well, the, 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 the bride in Songs of Solomon says, Where's my beloved? See, searching for him in the streets. Uh, and some of us are searching for Jesus because we've just put him in the background. He's with us, but we don't see him. So we run around searching. Where can we find him? When we look at the pornography, we, 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 we lost sight of him and we can't find him. Huh? When we, when we when we we get into things that we shouldn't and we start dabbling in evil and we shouldn't and, and we can't find him and we're like where are you and he's like right here but we can't see him because everything else is in focus and we just put him out of focus you see we know that Jesus 
He's the Lord of time. He's the Lord of matter. He's the Lord of space. He proved this when he healed the centurion's servant. You see, he sent his word to travel through a distance and heal the servant the moment he spoke. Trust him to send his word to heal you and deliver your life or deliver your loved one's life from destruction. Trust him. Send the word of God to... Ah, oh my Lord Jesus. Let me read to you Luke 7, 6 through 7 and verses 9 through 10. So Jesus went with them Talking about the centurion. Go read it for you. So just go read Luke chapter 7. You know, you'll find it. But just before they arrived at the house, the officer sent some friends to say, Lord, don't trouble yourself by coming to my home. For I'm not worthy of your, an honor. You may be saying this morning, you know what? I have dabbled in things I shouldn't have. I have lied. I have stolen. I have committed adultery. I have done the most despicable thing, whatever that may be. I don't know. You know, all sin is sin, right? So it really doesn't matter. But listen, you may feel you're not worthy. You're not worthy for getting healed. You're not worthy for God providing for you. But this morning, not so. He says, listen, the God of space says, I'm sending my word to you to heal you and deliver your life from destruction. Receive it. That's all you have to do. If you were hungry, let me ask you this question. If you were hungry, you know, you stole something yesterday from someone. But today you're hungry. And someone says to you, oh, here, I have a plate of food for you. Or they just say, come, come with me to the restaurant. I'll buy you a plate of food. Would you say to the person, you know what? No, mm -mm. I stole something yesterday. I can't take the food. No. If you're hungry, you're going to take the food. Receive the healing. Because when you receive the healing, you're saying, I'm worthy of the forgiveness that comes with that. Because Jesus and Jesus alone makes us worthy. Makes us worthy to receive healing. Makes us worthy to receive salvation. Makes us worthy to become righteous. Jesus and Jesus alone. So, let me continue reading. He says, I'm not worthy to come and meet with you. Just say the word from where you are and my servant will be healed. When, uh, now to verse 9, when Jesus heard this, he was amazed. Turning to the crowd that was following him, he said, I tell you, I haven't seen faith like this in all of Israel. And when the officer's friends returned to his house, they found that the slave was completely healed. What happened? The officer had Jesus in focus. He believed him to be the Lord of time, space and matter. It didn't matter. He didn't have to come to his house. This is what God has promised to do for you, beloved. And, and, and we have to realize every message that goes out is not for everyone. It may not be for you, but someone else may need it. So share the message. Just saying that to say 
There are times we hear a message, we ignore it, it goes over our head. We don't even listen. Our, our attention, our focus is elsewhere. But the person for who that it will benefit, they're lasered in. So here, God is sending a promise this morning. Don't know who it's for. But he has sent his word and healed them, snatching them from the door of death. This morning, God is sending his word to you to snatch you from the door of death. That's the word of God. He has sent his word to snatch you from the door of death. Jesus is also the Lord over matter. Yes, he is. Hallelujah, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. He walked through walls and he, in his glorified body, by the way, Hollywood has nothing. <laughs> I say this all the time. Oh, come on. And he raised dead bodies from a state of inertia to a state of life movement. There was Jairus' daughter. There was the mother, the widowed mother with her son, Lazarus, his friend, and countless others. Because we know, the Bible tells us there were many instances where that wasn't documented. The Bible could not hold it, the things that he did. So let me ask you this question this morning. Is there anything impossible for Jesus to do for you today? Will you make him the object of your affection? Will you make him the subject of your life's account? Will you make him the apple of your eye? You see... If you didn't know it, let me tell you this. You are the apple of his eye. I thank God I'm the apple of his eye. I don't know if you want to claim it or not, but yup, yes I am. Amen. <laughs> but let me tell you, you also are the apple of his eye. The thing about it, we don't have to be jealous of e each other because we're just, just claim him for yourself. That's all I'm going to say. Zechariah 2 and 8 says, For thus said the Lord of hosts, after his glory sent me to the nations who plundered you. For he who touches you touches the apple of his eye. Did you doubt that you are the apple of his eye? You're the apple of his eye. Come on. Listen, we are the object of his affection. You and I, we are the object of his affection. Songs of Solomon, you have captured, oh, Songs of Solomon 4, 9 through 10. You have captured my heart, my treasure, my bride. You hold it hostage with one glance of your eyes, with a single jewel of your neck. Your love delights me, my treasure, my bride. See, where his heart is, his treasure is. His heart is with me. It's his treasure, right? His heart is with you, his treasure. Because we are the object of his affection. Your love is better than wine. Your perfume more fragrant than spices. I don't know about you. Mm. Ah, I'm just too happy. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> the word of God really makes me happy. Doesn't it make you happy though? Seriously speaking. All right, I'm going to try to contain myself. As Bishop says, he's, he was trying to be good, I think, or behave. I don't know. <laughs> I was just trying to, Lord Jesus, amen. But so I'm closing, like literally closing now. We are the subject of his life's account. Here's the scripture. It's John three sixteen through 17. For this is how. God loved the world. He gave his one and only son, his one and only begotten son, 
so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life you have to believe in him you've got to put him in focus ah you got to recalibrate the lens and put him in focus god sent his son into the world not to judge the world but to save the world through him sons and daughters of god don't judge love Put Jesus in focus. Matter of fact, you know what? If you put Jesus in focus, you'll just love people. You just go about, because guess what? When you can receive the love that Jesus has for you, you're just going to want to share that love. You won't be selfish with it. Selflessness will fly out the window. You know, there are people who they get things to give away and they'll hoard it in their houses. I know somebody who did that and then said, oh my goodness, the thing spoiled. They they hoard food that expired. They hoard clothes. They hoard uh, um, things, you know, that should be given away. Pencils and stuff till they rot. The pens dry out. Do you know that that is a sin in the eyes of God? You're too loved. Not to love. I don't know about you, but when I think about the love of God for me, how can I not love? How can I not share love? His love covers us. Covers a multitude. The Bible says covers a multitude of sin. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You and I, sons and daughters of God, are the focus, are Jesus' focus. And daily, he makes new provision for us because we're his focus. Daily, he demonstrates his love for us because we are his focus. Won't you make him your focus today? Have a blessed and wonderful day. I love you guys. And God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, Jesus has made you his focus. So go on. Put your camera lens in focus. And let Jesus be at the forefront in Jesus' name. Have a blessed day.